Okay, so this is an unboxing of the TP-Link AC1900 wireless adapter. And the reason I'm doing this actually is for my desktop because my computer's in a spot where I can't reach the um, router with a cable. Well, I can, but it runs the cable basically along the floor and people are tripping on it. So I wanted to get a wireless adapter, um, fairly inexpensive one that can have some decent speeds with my Asus ROG uh, GT5300 or 5300 GT, whatever it is, wireless access point. And uh, this, I think, was 50 bucks, if I remember right, on Amazon. And they're claiming AC1900, and I guess that's because they're adding this 600 megabits at 2.4 gigahertz and the 1300 megabits at 5 gigahertz. And so I guess if you run both of those at the same time, you can potentially reach the uh, 1900 megabit. I haven't tested that theory, obviously, but... Um, I think it's going to be decent. I think it's actually the best one you can get. Best speed you can get, rather, for something in this price range. Anything faster than that's going to require a whole lot of antennas. And uh, it's going to be a totally different looking card. Maybe one of those actual PCI Express cards or something's got a bunch of antennas hanging out the back. So this is the wireless adapter. Honestly, this looks... Uh, this looks not new to me. I don't know why this would be wrapped like that. It's a weird way to wrap it. So, but this was original shrink, but they might have just re-shrunk it. I don't know. It looks pretty, pretty crappy. Okay, so I'm going to peel these off because I feel like it. So it's a pretty big adapter, right? If you were to stick this in the back of your computer, I guess you could. It's likely going to be like that. Who knows if it overlaps something else on the on the motherboard. So my intent is actually to use a stand with it. Put the stand maybe on top of my, my computer. So this is the stand. Oh, that's a pretty thick USB cable. Obviously, it's gonna it's gonna be the USB three. It's the only way you can handle the throughput that's supposedly capable of above this uh, one point nine gigahertz essentially. And let's pull this off. I'll show you what it looks like when I have it mounted there. So this guy, I think, is gonna sit. I would assume it sits like that. It makes sense. It looks good like that. And then that's essentially what it, you plug it in, and here's what you'll, you'll see. Pretty slick, huh? So what I'm going to try to do is some um, uh, speed comparisons, and I'll try to throw that here in just a second. Um, and we'll get doing that actually right now. Okay, so what we're going to do first here is I'm going to use iPerf. And I'm going to do a test from my desktop here. This is a, a cable connection. And what we want, to, I just want to compare the cable to the wireless adapter once I get it connected. So this is still connected to a one gig cable connected right to the back of my Asus router. And it is the uh, 5300, uh, ROG, the ROG GT5300, I think is the model. And uh, so it's an eight port, one gig switch in the back. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to run iperf command here to... Um, simulate network traffic between my my computer here which is in plugged in the same switch again but it's in a different room and then this computer here again both of these are cabled right now so there's no wireless involved and you can see the output here when i push enter oops so on average i'm getting what 927 919 megabits a second 918 917 924 925 so i would say that i mean that's pretty good right because it's a one gig link and obviously you're going to have overhead of packets these are tcp packets in addition um you're not like i don't feel like the application could potentially run the absolute maximum because there's going to be something that's causing an issue in your os layer your network stack layer or something and the reason i mentioned that is because without the reverse command here to to require my my computer that i'm doing that the, the uh, i performance test too Without doing this dash R, which basically tells iperf to send to tell the server to actually send the packets back to me instead, and that's the path we're going to test instead of me sending packets to 
to that testing server, I'm going to tell that testing server to send packets to me and then confirm the speed. And the reason I'm doing that is because if I go one direction, you can see that I'm getting, you know, 532 one direction. And with iperf reverse, I'm getting, you know, 920 the other direction. So I spent a, decent, a little bit of time, maybe an hour or so, trying to figure that out. I honestly don't know the cause of that. That seems kind of stupid to me. But, I mean, it is what it is, I guess. So um, with that said, I'm going to go ahead and plug in the... Uh, actually, there's one other thing I wanted to do. Hold on. Hold on. I get all excited. There was another tool here that I found called LAN Speed Test. And I'm going to do, to the same computer, our comp, I'm going to do a, um, a, a simulated disk write. And so this program doesn't do network to network type work actually it does if you pay for it but i'm not paying for it i'm doing the free version here and so essentially what it's going to do is it's going to write some random stuff to this this windows share here anywhere from 100 meg to uh, to 400 meg file and it's going to do it right and then read that same data so um, it's it's pretty close to the same performance as iperf so it's writing 305 megs write progress is definitely going to be slower and then the reading progress. Now keep in mind with this particular test, um, I am relying on the hard drive in that computer to also do the uh, performance test. So I'm testing more than just the network stack here. I'm testing the, the SSD, SSD capabilities in this desktop. So um, so it's a decent test. I mean, you're not getting you're not getting a hundred percent. I think the iperf is a little bit better. Hence why I'm getting 920 megabits, and then this one I'm getting a pretty consistent 850 ish. So I ran it a few, ooh, that's even a little bit slower. But anyway, somebody might be using the computer. I'm not even sure. It is a shared desktop. It's for uh, doing some recording work. So like it has Adobe Premiere on it and stuff like that. So, um, but I would say it's pretty consistently 850 megabits per second. So after I put the wireless adapter in, uh, we will run these exact same tests. Um, you can also see I'm pinging that computer here, and my ping time on the wire is pretty commonly less than a millisecond every once in a while. Every, there's some kind of latency something on one of the two windows hosts has uh, some delay in responding to the icmp packets so anyhow um let's get the wireless adapter uh, plugged in and configured and i'll be right back okay so uh i've got the tp wireless adapter plugged in now and i i have the uh the cable one gig cable disconnected uh, what i did want to show you though is this is literally the motherboard that i'm using and um, it is an Asus Z97E with USB 3.1, and I wanted to show that because that's important for, for performance, right? So it is it, this wireless TP wireless adapter is plugged into literally this port right here, which is the 3.1 USB, and so it should be capable of quite a bit of uh, throughput there. Um, that's important, right? Because I don't have it plugged into 3.0. 3.0's got some performance limitations. I don't know what they are, but the 3.1 is definitely fast. And so um, the performance numbers are, um, I guess they're kind of close to what I was expecting. Um, you can see that the link speed is 975 megabits, and this is an AC1900, right? Which means it should be capable of, um, I, I guess, a combined between the 5 gigahertz channel and the 2.4 gigahertz channel of a combined 1900 megabits performance. Now, I think that's uh, only the case if you had the uh, wireless adapter close enough to the access point that you could be using uh, full strength. And so this, this room is um, that the wireless um, adapter is in is probably 25 feet from the access point. And there are a couple walls and a flight of stairs that has to go somewhat go through to get to it. Um, all stick built, so it's just two by, two by four construction with drywall. So there's really no interference, no big file cabinets or anything like that here that would possibly cause Wi-Fi interference. Um, uh, so I know that, um, this isn't a super extensive test, right? Because some of the testing you might want to do is take this wireless adapter and bring it right next to the access point and see what kind of performance you can actually get out of the AC1900. So this isn't really a, Hey, this device is capable maximum of this number. No, I'm kind of doing like a re a reality test here because in reality, if you're five or six feet from your, your wireless access point, why the heck would you be using a wireless access? Why would you be using an, a, a wireless card or, or whatever? You just plug into the cable, right? That doesn't make any sense to use the wireless adapter. So, so I think this is a realistic test. 25 feet away, I'm in a room outside of the room where the wireless access point is. It's it's pretty common that people would be using wireless in this scenario. So, um, so I did want to show on the the Windows side here. It is Wi-Fi 5 802.11ac. 
Um, again, I think I already said this 975 megabits per second. We're not going to get that on any of these tests. We're going to get, you know, roughly 433. So let's run that same iperf command that we ran earlier on the gig link and see what we get out of it. So 400, 432, 503. So we're getting mid to, ooh, that's a good one. 600. Nice. That's very interesting. So pretty inconsistent speeds. I mean, I guess that's common for wireless. I'm going anywhere from almost 600 to uh, mid 400s. I would say that's that's pretty good performance, honestly. Um, one of the other things that I had going here on the other screen that I, I uh, didn't do here was I wanted to do a ping to to the same box and so now you can see that the response time like in the other example the response time was uh, less than one millisecond you know that's pretty common for cable cabled uh, ethernet and so um, wired ethernet rather and so um, with wireless it's this is still pretty good I mean one millisecond two millisecond that's pretty good for wireless I think um, the other test we wanted to do was this land speed test which does the disk write onto the same box so we're going to write 270 uh, megs is what it says down here. It's a, it's a random number between 100 and 400 for this test. And then obviously the read is the performance number we're interested in seeing because the write seems to always be slower. Um, not super impressed with that write speed there, honestly. But the read speed is definitely um, corresponding with this, right? We've got 530 megabits here, and my disk write on this other box is, is 475. So... I'd say that's pretty good. Obviously, um, the test here right, writes to the disk, and so there's extra layers there that are probably adding that additional little bit of latency there, or, or not latency, a little bit of overhead, which is why it's draw, it's a difference between 536 and 475. So um, so that's all I wanted to show you guys. I know it's not a super extensive, extensive test, but I do hope it at least gave you some insight on what this... Um, TP-Link adapter is capable of in a real-world scenario where you're, you know, 30, 25, 30 feet from the access point, which you can expect out of this wireless um, adapter. So thanks for watching, guys.